The Minds at Fundy software give you the world's first professional auto design. In one click, Fundy Designer V7 analyzes timestamps, checks star ratings, even looks for design keywords in order to give you what you need most, time. Couple the world's fastest album designs with marketing tools and wall art sales, and Fundy Designer V7 could be the most profitable design software the industry has ever seen. Learn more at FundyDesigner.com. So, Jamie, is this something that you do? I mean, I, I love how everything's yeah. in pots. So you we just keep have everything a in to... containers. Um, so, and then I have different vessels we can put them in. So depending on the colors that the family are wearing and what Mary's determined in the consultation, um, what match and coordinate, I always kind of like to have a little bit of detail in the foreground, mid-ground, background. So th I'll have something in this coordinating color with their outfits. And we have um, all different colors. So that way, if I have pinks and blues, right, right. Uh, reds, oranges, and it changes seasonally. And, I love and the great thing is you don't have to really some of these things are permanently put in pots right. and then other things are movable so that way I can pick and choose um, and it's lightweight and easier to move because um, if I ex use all my energy trying to create the amazing set I have no energy left for the session. <laughs> that makes sense and I like how they're all different heights. Yeah. So if they're heights. seated you, you're good if they're standing mm -hmm. you're good. This is great that makes it really easy. I added the planters around it wasn't a part of the original design but it's great because I can change things in and out pull different colors when I need to versus yeah. um, having everything permanently in one place. I like everything to be a little bit movable and that way right. I don't get stuck in the same rut of doing the same thing, <laughs> same pose, same angle all the time. Right. Your I, style is crazy. very, that it's that very classic time heirloom kind yes. of a portrait versus the lifestyle running around kind of a kind of a, a thing. So I'm looking forward to seeing how you create that. It's kind of that, that really um, kind of almost quiet personal very very relationship oriented mm -hmm. um yeah we're probably kind of. opposite of most photographers today most photographers shoot more lifestyle and they're all about shooting candid candy candy and they shoot like three quarter and close up um for me we're exactly opposite of that that's the add-on sales if i do my job right those right. are the images right. that um and they're totally orchestrated it's not it's not let the kids run around for two and a half hours where you don't have the energy for that we're, we're johnny on the spot mom you know if i don't get what we need in the first 20 minutes of the session as far as sales then everything could possibly go down from there so i always start with the wall portrait pose first right because if i get nothing but that one shot i can still meet our average sale and what we expect to get from that client even if i only get one shot right 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 um, i'm looking forward to talking to mary about that because we're going to talk a lot about setting your goals and knowing what your average yep. sales are. So we'll kind of, we're going to have uh, a, some great conversation with Mary a little later to talk, talk more about that too. So buddy, can you um, sit down on the ground right there for me? Come out just a little teeny bit more from daddy. Hey Jack, can you um, uh, bring your right knee up to your chest like this? There you go, bud. All right, tell you what, no, I like that. Switch knees and do the other knee. Let me see if I like that one better. Okay, that's pretty good. Tuck this one behind there and let this one come forward. Put that one in front of that one. There you go, bud. That's now we're like, I uh, like, kind of like that. All right, tell you what, that's perfect, but stand up and push your pant legs down and, and get back in the same position, just so they're a little longer. There you go. Perfect. There, you, that's great. All right, all right, stand up for me a sec. All right, all right, now sit back down. It's, because boys' pants always do that. There you go, buddy. All right, Blair, can you can you sit right here by mommy? Sweetie, tuck your right foot underneath your left foot and lean toward mommy a bunch. There you go. All right, so Jack, can you scooch in closer to mom a little bit more? That's perfect, right there. All right, Brian, I'm gonna have you actually come out that way a little bit more. So if you and Caitlin can come out a little bit more, please. All right, good. Now, so let's pull some colors into the foreground area to go with your pinks. Let's pull some blues in. That too. Wow, that's fantastic. Perfect. 
Okay, I'm just going to add a couple things. All I'm doing now is I'm going to fill in the background with a few elements. Well, Teddy, are you in the family portrait? He is a photo trained dog. Come here, T. All right, that's actually really good. Uh, Blair, can you push your toes out just a tiny little bit for me, sweetie? Brian, can you bring your right hand into your body? Just maybe hold on to Steph's arm. Uh-huh, like that, that's good. Hey, Jack, lean your head this way a little bit. That's great, perfect. Hey, Jack, can you lean your head this way a little bit? Good, like make it go like this. Whoa, that's perfect, just like that, that's great. Okay, good, everybody relax from there. That's great, can you put your hand here on your hip? All right, that works for me. That's great, everybody stay there. Blair, can you turn in this way a little bit more? Yep, now Blair, can you take your hip and do like this? Go the other way, sweetie. Uh, go push the other side. Nice, the other way. No, not that way, that's crazy way. No, the other way. Here, I'll come help you. No, you're good, you're good. You're close, hang on. So, walking closer, 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 closer. Okay, turn this toad this way. Bend your knee a little bit. Right there. All right, Caitlin, hang on a minute. Look here at me, Caitlin. Caitlin, do me a favor. Can you just hold this with two fingers right there? Just put this hand back up on your hip. Uh-huh, just let it relax. There you go, good, just like that. Caitlin, scooch over to Jack just a little tiny bit. And Caitlin, can you take your right foot across your left foot like this? Yes, hold there. Hey, Blair. Silly. Good job. Okay, everybody relax from there. Jamie, I know you were talking about using this additive light out here. Can, can we look at um, kind of where you're pointing this light? I noticed as yeah, I was sure. standing here, you're not actually pointing that light right at them. It is feathered off in front of them just a little bit. Um, I use additive light, which means I use a strobe in every image that I create, unless I'm on the side of a mountain or candids at a beach where I'm doing just walking to or from the beach. Right. But by using an additive light and a, a rather large um, light modifier, it gives me soft quality of light on the face. Right. Um, and it also allows me to not worry about white balance. So because flash is roughly 5,500 to 7,000 degree Kelvin, depending on your light modifier and your strobe. Okay. The light on the face will stay consistent throughout every single one of those images. So when you're setting your camera, you're on Kelvin? Do you set it for um, Kelvin? I set it for, um, actually outdoors is a little different. I set it for um, the flash white balance, which for Canon is 7,000 degrees Kelvin. Okay. And the reason I do that is with green grass and blue sky, I pick up a little cyan tint in the shadow areas and in the any area where this does not strike. Okay. 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 Now in post, um, our retoucher, we we don't do any retouching at all. Everything's outsourced. So we would have the retoucher then subtract some of that cyan color with okay. whatever tool they choose to use. Right. So that if that is an objection to the client. Um, and by metering the light, what I actually do is I balance the light the strobe to the ambient. So I take an ambient light meter reading first, dome out. Okay. The reason I use a handheld light meter is because the light that falls on the subject isn't influenced by the skin color or the tonality of the subject. It's just the amount intensity of light on the, that falls on the subject. So what I do is I take an ambient light meter reading with the dome out, mm -hmm. determine my ISO shutter speed and aperture of what I subjectively want the, the image to be. And normally outdoors in a family like this, I'm always at F11. Okay. And the reason I'm at F11 is I wanna make sure that I don't miss focus. Right. And especially right. in larger portraits. It wouldn't make a difference if the client were purchasing 11 by 14s and smaller. But once you get past that, it's very important that faces be sharp in all of the images. Sure. I'll back up and zoom way in throwing the foreground and the background out of focus. Now, a lot of photographers shoot at a wider aperture or specialty lenses, which are totally fine, but you'd have to have a different system right. and concept every time you photograph. So if I were to do that model, I'd constantly be changing my aperture. And I know me, once I'm in the zone, I would forget and I might photograph the entire family at 2.8. Right. And then right. we wouldn't figure that out into the sales room. And then I've killed the entire right. sale. For my main light, I'm using a Photo B1 unit, which is battery operated, has a lithium ion battery and an LED modeling light. Now I'm not using continuous light source here, but if I needed to, this is amazing. These are just the bomb diggity right now. Fully remote controlled from the camera position or from my pocket, so I don't have to constantly run over to adjust any setting on the back of the strobe. Um, also, 
these match the strobes that I'm using inside. I use the same brand indoors and outdoors. So that way, if I have a session where I'm doing both indoor and outdoor images, they're consistent in the exposure and the white balance on the face. I use a, about a 20, 22 inch soft box. This one is great because all the rods are flexible. Um, this is made by XP Photo Products. If this falls over, nothing's gonna break. So that is super. In the size, I like a, the round soft box too because it creates beautiful round catch lights in the eyes. I do have a hook on here too in case I need to, uh, for additional weight. This is so lightweight that it could easily blow over in the wind. Um, and then all I do is simply adjust up and down. And then from the uh, light meter, I use Sekonic light meter um, to make sure that I take an ambient reading of the environment. That's what I set my shutter speed and aperture and ISO on my camera. And then I determine whatever my exposure is gonna be from there based on the mood feeling and also how much I need in focus. I then match the strobe to the ambient. I do an ambient exposure with the dome out. This allows me to have the light that's coming from overhead in all different directions. That's my base exposure. For the main light, I actually retract the dome I set my light meter to 1 25th of a second. And that is just on my light meter, not on the camera. That tells the meter not to take into account a lot of the ambient exposure, more the flash exposure. And then I match them 100%. So in this situation, I was photographing, I think at 100 ISO at F11. So I made this light go off at F11. And the great thing about that lighting concept is I only have to remember one number. Whatever I set my aperture at, I want this flash to go off at too. If it's a situation where I have lots of strong light in the background and I wanna overpower that, let's say a field where there's bright sun, I will then just choose whether I increase the power of the strobe or not. So by doing this type of a system, it's very simple and easy and concise as far as the information and the technical part, allowing me to spend more time with the clients getting expression and more worrying about their experience than the technical aspect.